Uh, next question, we're going to move on. Um, so this is a 69-year-old female presents with insidious onset of pain exacerbated by the overhead activities of the shoulder. Her examination shows pain with uh, both active and passive uh, forward elevation beyond 90 degrees. She has pain with reaching behind her back. An MRI is shown in figures A and B, which I'll pull those up here. So these are coronal images of the rotator cuff. Uh, the middle and uh, right side images are, are, are uh, more of a T2 or water weighted image. And here you can see there is uh, a small full thickness rotator cuff tear and there's swelling in the uh, bursa sac. So the question that they're asking is which cytokine has been associated with this problem. And uh, you can just from process of elimination, uh, you basically know that the, that the correct answer is metalloproteinases. So these are uh, inflammatory cytokines that we have in joint fluid uh, that have been linked to arthritis and inflammatory conditions. The other answers here are more, real, uh, more linked to cytokines from uh, either metastatic uh, or uh, uh, metastatic bone cancer or other primary carcinomas. So just keep in mind that uh, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, this question highlights the point that a lot of times it's not the tear itself that causes pain, but it's the inflammation around the tear, tear or the bursitis. Um, so um, we're going to move on here. So subacromial impingement is considered the first stage of rotator cuff disease, which represents a continuum of tendonitis and tendinopathy and impingement to a partial tear to a full thickness tear. And that timeline is different for everybody. Uh, but they can reach a point of massive full thickness cuff tear and eventually cuff tear arthropathy. Um, the uh, uh, incidence of cuff disease is actually fairly common in the aging population. Um, this statement here in blue, subacromial impingement, is the most common cause of shoulder pain. I would completely disagree with. Uh, Bill Levine may argue with me about that. But I think it's very common to say that rotator cuff pain or uh, pain generators are the number one cause of shoulder pain. Impingement is a subclassification of rotator cuff pain, but uh, rotator cuff probably does account for anywhere from 50% to two-thirds of patients with, rotator, with uh, shoulder pain. You basically have a combination of ext extrinsic uh, compression, which is your subacromial uh, impingement process, uh, where that's mechanical contact of the cuff and bursa against the anterior acromion and the corcoacromial ligaments. Uh, combined with an intrinsic degeneration, uh, which is a tendinopathy and degeneration of the supraspinatus uh, tendon. Those two together can lead to basically shoulder weakness, and they, they basically perpetuate the problem. So intrinsic degeneration is more likely to lead to, lead to extrinsic subacromial uh, impingement. Um, the the uh, painful impingement syndrome is primarily an inflammatory process related to the sub, uh, inflammation in the rotator cuff bursa. Associated conditions include a hook-shaped acromion uh, and posterior capsular contracture. Not sure that I agree that osochromial is a real important part of, of, of your daily practice, but remember to look at scapular uh, range of motion. Patients with impingement syndrome very frequently have a tight posterior capsule and poor scapular uh, control. The Bigliani classification you should be very familiar with. Um, uh, it does suffer from a poor interobserver reliability, but uh, Dr. Nier and Dr. Dr. Bigliani really uh, 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 changed our understanding of, of how we think about cuff disease, and they, just, uh, they basically described three uh, acromial shapes. The only acromial shape that has been actually uh, uh, positively linked to cuff tears, in my opinion, is a hooked acromion. So, the problem with this classification is, is uh, Dr. Levine and I might disagree on what a type 2 versus a type 1 versus a type 3 acromion is. Um, symptoms of impingement is, are basically pain. Usually patients have reasonable range of motion and strength. Uh, pain is exacerbated by overhead activities and they can't have pain at nighttime. Physical exam for uh, impingement alone without a cuff tear usually reveals uh, normal strength. Uh, the positive impingement uh, physical exam test that we talk about, imp near impingement sign, Hawkins test, they can have pain, usually not weakness, uh, with the Jobes test. Um, radiographs are typically your standard views, true AP of the shoulder. Here you're looking for uh, the acromial humeral interval and ruling out other sources of pain, such as uh, uh, glenohumeral arthritis or uh, calcific tendonitis of the shoulder. The supraspinatus outlet view is helpful for determining 
uh, uh, for the presence of a large bone spur or a type 3 acromion. Um, other radiographic findings in late stage disease, this film on the right here shows a rotator cuff tear arthropathy with proximal migration, mechanical contact of the head against the acromion, and glenohumeral arthritic changes. Um, tr uh, traction osteophytes or the type 3 hooked acromion are seen in some patients with rotator cuff tears. Uh, the majority of patients with tears have normal x-rays. If you do see a hooked acromion or a bone spur on the lateral edge of the acromion, that, that patient very likely does have rotator cuff disease. It doesn't tell you if they, have, if they have a tear or not. There you need to rely on your physical exam and your advanced imaging. Uh, when you have a patient that has chronic impingement, uh, we don't start off with advanced imaging. Uh, most insurance companies won't pay for MRIs as a first-line treatment, so usually you have to control their inflammation, send them to physical therapy, re-image them, and then you can order a, a special test later. The three most commonly used tests are MRI, CT arthrogram, and ultrasound. Uh, MRIs are helpful. Uh, they, they give you more information uh, if you have a patient that's younger that has cuff disease, the MRI also gives you information that an ultrasound cannot. So uh, information about the biceps tendon, anchor, the labrum, for example. If a patient has uh, isolated cuff pain, I think an ultrasound uh, has equal accuracy to MRI, but this is debatable. Um, the histology, interesting, if you take a biopsy of the uh, rotator cuff and bursa, that does show not only inflammation, but it shows disorganized collagen and mucoid degeneration. Uh, and if you take a biopsy of the cuff tendon itself, it's not just a tendonitis, there's a tendinosis phenomenon. So there's an intrinsic degeneration that happens with the tendon. The treatment for impingement, mainstay is physical therapy, uh, anti-inflammatory uh, medicines and injections. It's important to work on range of motion and posterior capsule stretching first. Uh, make sure you address the scapula and then move on to uh, rotator cuff strengthening exercises secondarily. Um, you, operative management uh, can be considered. I think patients would, would say they need, most sur surgeons would tell you that they need to fail at least one injection and, uh, and three to six months of, uh, of conservative management before considering a subacromial decompression. Most high volume shoulder surgeons will tell you that they perform you know, 10 times more cuff repairs than they do uh, subacromial uh, decompressions if they have good indications, good solid indications. What that tells you is that most patients with impingement alone, as long as they don't have a big bone spur, they'll respond pretty well to, con uh, to conservative management. Uh, there should, there should, you, know, you should note that uh, a decompression alone has about a 20% failure rate, and uh, there are some risk factors for failure, one of which is workman's compensation claims. So you want to try to maximize conservative treatment in those patients. If you do an acromioplasty, it can be done either arthroscopic or open. I think there is no real clear advantage of one to, uh, over the other. Uh, nowadays, most patients are doing it, most surgeons are doing it arthroscopically, and it does definitely create less early uh, pain and less stiffness in the shoulder. Um, complications of open acromioplasty or, or failed open cuff repair include deltoid dysfunction. So if the deltoid isn't repaired adequately, um, that can pull off the acromion. And uh, anterosuperior escape, which is usually a combination of cuff deficiency, deficiency of the coracoacromial arch and uh, anterior deltoid deficiency. And that's where uh, when the patient tries to raise their arm, the humerus actually escapes anteriorly out from under the coracoacromial arch. We don't see that much uh, these days now because most of the time um, uh, the cuff repairs are performed arthroscopically. And to have true escape, you actually have to have a, some type of uh, some element of, an, of deltoid dehiscence. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.